when you throw the throttle forward on your very first time by yourself, it's a pretty surreal feeling. When you look back, you can see those intakes. They're basically right there in your periphery. If you were to look, this aircraft doesn't have a tail hook. So the only way that we can get land back down on the ship is vertical. Hey guys, B Snappy here. Lucas here just landed in this Harrier jet. All right, Lucas, where did you just come from? We we're stationed in Cherry Point, North Carolina. And what type of jet exactly is it? So this is an AV-8B Harrier 2 Plus, technically, because it's got the radar on it. Um, yeah. So that's what we fly. So how long does it take you to get here? Around an hour and a half, basically, to get here from North Carolina. And on a normal day, how many hours a day are you flying? Uh, it depends. There's a lot of stuff that we do that's not flying related, yep. uh, but when we do go fly, we try to stay airborne. Depending on the configuration, you can see we've got uh, external fuel tanks on this model right now. Uh, with those on, we try to get airborne for about an hour and a half at a time, depending on what kind of training we're doing. Yep. All right, so I noticed it's a single pilot jet. How did it feel when you first hit the thrust on your first solo? Um, it's a pretty wild feeling. Uh, this aircraft has a lot of power for its given weight and when you take off, you, there's a lot of training prior to that, a lot of training in this aircraft, uh, just because of the systems that are there. Yep. Uh, and the fact that it does have nozzles that you can do things vertically, right? It takes a lot of training. Uh, but yeah, when you throw the throttle forward on your very first time by yourself, it's a pretty surreal feeling, especially when you look back, you can see those intakes. They're basically right there in your periphery, uh, which is not something you're used to when you're flying a two-seat plane and it's a little bit further from training flights, so it's good. So I noticed it's a vertical landing jet. Are you like landing on moving ships or? Uh, yeah, actually we, we do these things called Marine Expeditionary Units. Um, it's part of our deployment cycle for the AVAB. Uh, our last one is actually getting prepped and ready to go uh, later this year. So we take off uh, normally most of the time. Our vertical takeoff isn't something we really do because there's a, a weight restriction basically to that point. Yeah. Uh, performance for the engine. But the vertical landing is, yeah, that's, that's how we land on those types of ships. Uh, if you were to look, this aircraft doesn't have a tail hook. Yep. Uh, so the only way that we can get land back down on the ship is vertical. What were you flying before this? How did you step up from just a normal sort of plane to a Harrier jet? So everything that I flew prior to this was training. So I didn't have a different military aircraft prior to this. This is all I've known. I've got, you know, over a thousand hours in this model. But to, to answer your question, it was a bit of a step up because previous to this, I didn't have something with novels or anything like that, right? So you. You learn how to fly a basic military aircraft, military jet, yep. and then all of a sudden I strap this thing on and, and now I've got a whole new world. But like I talked about, there is so much training that goes into you know, simulators and then your two-seat training aircraft before you actually bring this aircraft out go solo. How long does it take to go from just that to awesome jet? Uh, it can take anywhere from two years if you're really quick probably closer to two and a half and really quick all the way up to probably four to five years depending oh, wow. on, on how long it takes that's uh just to kind of get through to the harrier uh, yeah the harrier itself is a little bit additional sometimes too so what's your favorite feature of the jet i'd be wrong probably if i said it, the landing vertical part is amazing because yeah you know depending on the winds if they're out of limits uh and i've got a place that i can do it uh then i'll just swing it in and land vertically but um i actually used to work on this aircraft when i was enlisted uh as an aviation ordnance guy so for me, the favorite feature is all the bombs and all the fun stuff that we can put on the aircraft. I noticed on your badge here, you got an ACE and an S on there. What does that mean? Yeah, it's the ACE of spades. So the, the squadron is VMA-231. Uh, it's actually the Marine Corps' very first aviation squadron ever. That's what this patch that says 1919 designates. It's, uh, it's when they were founded. Um, so that's when they are there. Their mascot essentially is the ACE of spades. All right, thanks so much for the interview, Lucas, and I hope to see you in the skies. Yeah, definitely. Thank you.